Hey, what's up everybody? I want to welcome you back. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a video. I uh, kind of want to apologize for that. Been real busy, but uh, we're going to try to make more of an effort to uh, be more regular with these and uh, share what the Lord Lord gives us. Um, this message that I'm going to share with you today, the Lord gave it to me here, uh, it's been a few months ago, and I, I preached it, and then I kind of laid it aside, and I've uh, just kind of been waiting for another opportunity to share it, and this seemed like a good opportunity. So this message, I don't normally you know, put titles on messages because I don't really write sermons. I just kind of, you know, use the scripture that the Lord puts on my heart. But this sermon, it's, it's, it's called the narrow life. And it's, that's a call on every believer to live a narrow life. And we're going to get into some scripture here and then we're going to get a little bit more into this narrow life thing. But, but in, in Matthew seven thirteen, Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go by it. The reason that the, that the wide path is so wide and it's so easy to walk is because so many people have walked it before. It's a well-beaten path, right? This, this narrow path that we're called to walk, this narrow gate that we're looking for, it's narrow because it's hard to find. The road's rough and it's hard because not many people have walked it. So over in Luke 13:23. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? Are there few who are saved? And he said to them in verse 24, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Are there few who are saved? We have this mentality in the church that everybody's going to heaven. The modern church is so soft and so watered down with their messages anymore. It seems like, for the most part, and I'm not saying there aren't good God-fearing preachers of the gospel, but the mainstream church has gotten so far away from sanctification, so far away from justification by faith, so far away from, from accountability and obedience that I don't even know where they get their messages most of the time. I guess they download them off a website or something. I don't know. But this says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. That, that wide path, that, that wide gate is the default destination of everyone who doesn't step off of that path. If you don't choose to step on the narrow path, if you don't strive to enter that narrow, that narrow way, the broad path is your destination. And the end of that broad path drops off into hell. He says, I say to you, many will seek and enter and will not be able. The reason they're not able is because they're so weighted down with the things of this world. They're so weighted down with the things of the flesh. They're so overwhelmed with everything that has nothing to do with their salvation, with their sanctification, with their relationship with God, that they're so fat they can't fit through the door. They're so weighed down with, with foolishness, with unnecessary burdens, an unnecessary weight. In 7.14, we get more explanation. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Few will find it. Everybody's not going to heaven, folks. Everybody's not going to make it. Few are going to find the gate that leads to life. This gate is Jesus Christ. And the Lord hit me with this this morning while I was working. He said, you know what? He said, that gate is Christ. And anything that isn't Christ isn't going through that gate. You're not taking anything through the narrow gate that isn't Jesus. Everything else is just going to be holding you back and making it harder and harder for you to fit through that gate when you get to it. John 10, 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. He is that door. He is the way to glory. He is the way to heaven. Romans 2.13 says, For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. You can listen to this message, you can share this message, or you can delete this message. But once you hear it, you're required to do something with it. To just hear it, to just hear the word and discard it 
What's the point of even hearing it? The doers are justified. Just hearing the law, just hearing the word saves nobody. Sitting in church for 50 years will not save you. Okay, Singing in a choir will not save you. Teaching Sunday school will not save you. It's the application of the word to our lives that brings about a relationship with the Lord, which leads to salvation, which leads to walking this walk out all the way to the end and entering into glory. So our goal, to sum this up, our goal is to enter by the narrow gate, to do what we have to do to get there. And to do that, we have to be willing to do things or not do things that everyone else won't. We have to be willing to live a narrow life, a life free from worldly ways and willful sin. You can't be like everybody else because everybody else isn't going to make it. You have to set yourself apart from everybody else. You have to set yourself apart from the ways of the world. You have to set yourself apart from the culture and from society and from all the things that are contrary to God. We have to be willing to live a narrow life. We have to be willing to set ourselves apart as a sanctified people. Sanctification is to be set apart to God. And it begins at conversion. It begins at salvation. God sanctifies you when you accept Jesus Christ. You're saved. You're sanctified. You're justified. Okay? So, The process then continues throughout our lives as Christ's righteousness is accomplished in us and through us by the Word and by the Holy Spirit. We're sanctified by the Word. We're sanctified by the leading of the Spirit. He calls us to come out and be separate, be different, right? Not to partake in what everybody else partakes in. Not to partake in the things we used to partake in. But we're given a new nature. We become a new creation. All that stuff that we used to do prior to knowing Christ isn't fitting for us anymore. Leviticus 20 verse 7 says, Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. And you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Jude 1, those who are called sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus. Those who are called. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, you are called. Okay, You are called, you are sanctified, and you are preserved in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says, For this is the will of God. You want to know what the will of God is? It's your sanctification. This is what God wants for you, and this is what God wants from you. If you're to be called his child, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. In other words, you possess your flesh, you possess your body in sanctification and honor. Okay? Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles or the unsaved world. Okay, the Gentiles would be the unsaved, unchurched world. Okay, we don't act like they do. We don't do the things that they do because we're no longer one of them. Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That none should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord of the Avenger is the Avenger of all such. As we also forewarn you and testified. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9, and flame of fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you know the word of God and refuse to obey it, you're the same in God's eyes as an unbeliever. You're the same as an enemy. He says you're either for me or you're against me. Just because you've read the word, just because you sat in church, just because you've wandered up to an altar a few times in your life doesn't make you a child of God. Those who do not Obey, they shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. That's a hard word. But that's not my word. That's God's word. That's Scripture. The bottom line is, 
We are called to live a sanctified life. We're called to come out from among them and be different. We're called to be ambassadors for Christ. We shouldn't feel at home in this world. We shouldn't feel comfortable around sinful things. We shouldn't partake in sinful things. We should have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. We should flee from sin. We should resist the devil at every every turn. It's warfare every single day. God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. God calls us to live a narrow life. The only way to heaven, the only way to God, is through the narrow gate, which is Jesus Christ. And the only way through that gate is to live a narrow life. If you're saved, it's time to dedicate yourself. Make it a resolution. Make it whatever you want, but make the commitment to to strive for holiness, to truly sanctify yourself. Get the things out of your life, out of your house that are contrary to God. Set yourself apart and live the narrow life that you may enter by the narrow gate. Shed all that extra stuff that's unnecessary, that's contrary to God's plan for your life. And if you're not saved, if you're not already a child of God, now's the time to start walking that narrow path. Now's the time to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to ask him to save you and to deliver you. All you got to do is admit that you're a sinner and ask him to be the Lord of your life. Ask him to save you. And he will. So until next time, God bless you. This is Pastor Nick.